What's going on guys and welcome to the beginning of I don't know how long a series this is going to be um, Quick explanation is that I wasn't actually planning on recording any of this gameplay But I've been enjoying myself quite a lot over on the server and I thought I may as well share some of my gameplay and experiences that I'm having on the new Ark Valguero map Oh yeah by the way if you didn't realise we are on Ark Valguero um, I was invited over to a server by Matt who I met on the Minecraft server that I've been playing on. Now the Minecraft um, Let's Play series, they have not ended for you who are waiting for Minecraft episodes. I'm literally just having a two or three week break from Minecraft. I've put in so many hours into the multiplayer server and because it's died down a bit at the moment due to summer holidays and people having other obligations. Um, I decided to sort of have a holiday from Minecraft myself and just uh, play a couple of other games that I've been really enjoying playing and uh, Ark has primarily taken up the majority of my spare time that I've had in order to play games and I am actually thoroughly enjoying it compared to the last experience I've had. Now we are playing on the Xbox One and well Xbox One slash Windows 10 version so the way this is set up is that it's a cluster server, so the main server is the Valguero, which is the one that we're currently on, as you can tell from our beautiful backdrop here. And I've done a little bit of exploring, and then the other maps that we got at the moment on the cluster is, I do believe, the island and Ragnarok. Now, I'm led to believe that the admins and the server owner has plans on doing map rotations with Valguero being the primary one of the cluster so obviously don't get too attached to the other maps while they're doing the rotations because they're only going to be temporary sort of things so that way we can explore all the other maps without having seven maps on a cluster costing an absolute fortune to do it that way and the sort of rotation means that you've got a certain amount of time that you can put into each sort of map and uh as long as this one's like the primary one, obviously moan, well, moan? Yep. most of our building and uh, concentration on advancing is obviously going to be on Valguero. And that's because it's the newest map. But um, just to catch you up to show you what you've missed so far, I've actually put together a couple of little clips. So uh, first of all, we have got what everyone does when they first join the server. Now, I did join on the island, so what we first of all... Well, what we first of all went and done is we went and gathered some wood and then we went and gathered some stone as you usually do and then we ventured down the beach hunting dodos as you usually do and then I decided to build a little bit of a beach house which I was pretty happy of but then I got attacked by Spino so uh, that was no fun um, we got a couple of first tames the moss chops being my very first one which is not the greatest but it works and then we set sail for the seven seas of the island, trying to find somewhere to sort of base up while they was getting the Valguero map up and running. And after sailing around for a good while, I actually ended up getting lost considering island, or the island is the first map I ever played on and it's been a while. And then to stop others from getting lost, I decided to pull over and build what anyone would build to level up a lighthouse, as you usually would. And... Uh, um, I thought it came out pretty half, well, half decent, and uh, it was fun building it, and it leveled me up quite considerably, especially with the exploring oaks in the area. And then I went and found Mac, who invited me to his tribe. Now, he already had a two to three week head start on the island, so he had a kibble farm and rexes all up and running. So he was uh, very kind enough to accept us into his tribe, which sort of helped progress me forward on a sort of evolution tree as far as dinos and whatnot are concerned and then i've sort of been jumping from map to map ever since i came onto valguero jumping between ragnarok as you can see by the griffin this was actually a 140 tame griffin and oh my god i wish i'd done recording of it then it's actually that tame alone that's actually convinced me to start recording because so many things went wrong in it and so many fit literally there's the only thing that didn't go wrong with it is that the tame didn't get messed up but I got killed by numerous things and then I was struggling to get the taming food so I didn't want to go using max kibble for it because unless it's a 150 which is the max level on the servers I 
don't really want to go wasting kibble, especially the extraordinary kibble, because it's a bit of a pain to make. Although the was it Deinonychus? I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. But I believe that's the egg that you can use now. That's on this map, which is them little grappling things, like the raptor-type feather things that grab onto Rexes. Um, I believe their eggs now make the kibble. So, yeah, I thought that I'd set up a little table and chair here just to explain the sort of... Oh, I don't like the way that I'm looking there. So if I look this way and then we can go switch and then we'll actually be looking to the camera. There we go. So I set this up just so that we've got a fairly decent backdrop so I can have a quick word with you before we progress in our very first episode. And to try to explain to you as to why we are so far ahead. Like at the moment we are sitting at level 75. And as you can tell by the wingsuit I've already done a little bit exploring in the aberration area. Which is actually where I want our first adventure today to take us because I really want one of the sort of either glow tails, feather lights or bulb dogs as a shoulder buddy. Now you have got the Jaboas on this map which I've already managed to kill about four or five of them. I did tame another one which I've got sitting back at our base location. I'm going to take you over there in a sec. And um, I've been sort of reluctant to take him out because whenever I take one out I end up getting killed just like... They are seriously like a bad luck charm, but I was hoping to sort of, um, first of all, we're going to have to get rid of all of this, just so other people can build around this area should they wish to. And goodbye. That was uh, worth the while making. So yeah, let me head over to our base location. I'll show you the sort of stuff that I've got going on there. Alright, so this is our sort of beginning base area. Well, not really beginning base, but our permanent base area. Now, um... Mac is currently asleep up there, I do believe. He's uh, being a very lazy boy, very reluctant to help. So I did actually go ahead and I dressed him. And then after I've built the platforms and built the beds, I dragged him up to his bed. And unfortunately, I can't make him lay on his bed. So yeah, he's just going to have to lay there in a little bit of a crumpled mess. But we have made advancements. We've got now a power generator. We've got cables running to refrigerators. So we've got food on the go. And we've actually, I actually went out and got a bunch of cooked lamb in an effort to tame some phylos. But I ended up dying about three or four times after having my shotgun nipped. Because I had my shotgun on the last slot of my hotbar. Yeah, I really wish I got that recording because I was swearing like nothing on earth. It was ridiculous how stressed it was making me. And it's a fun stress because it's just like what more could go wrong. But yeah, we're based up in a cave, so we've got a little workshop area up here. Now, the primary focus of this little mini-series, regardless of how long it goes on for, is not going to be me building and me sitting around trying to knock something out and waiting for it to tame. It's just going to be like, well, this is progress what we've made on the base, this is what it looks like. And then, hopefully, the main focus is just going to be on our adventures, which I'm hoping to get to very soon. But we have actually got a fair few dinos. I've opted for a mammoth instead of the beaver. Now, Mac already had a beaver tamed, but the mammoth gets a much bigger reduced weight on the wood. And you could probably tell by most of the stuff that I tamed, um, I tend to paint all of their saddles. <laughs> so, yeah. And then we've got our other dinos. Oh, I went ahead and tamed a rex as well over in the white cliffs area and that was purely so i had something to run around and get some meat because i kept on running out of food the dinos needed food and trying to go around on an rg was a bit of a pain so i just came i think it was like a 135 rex whacked on a painted was it rex bionic costume yeah painted one of them whacked it on him and then I've got a couple more RGs and I tamed up a saber tooth that was useless at gathering like gathering meat. So then I tamed a low level Philo which I've named Juno because well why not? I always did like the film Juno. And then I whacked on a pair of glasses and uh, painted her saddle. Is it her? He? Her? Uh, so thank God for that. Juno's correct. And then um, Lemantria because I was. Honestly, I don't know. I was sort of waiting for metal to smelt and I was in the area and so it was nearby. Knocked it out, tamed it because I'd never had one. I was hoping that these guys would help produce silk, but yeah, they're absolutely useless. So I may just kill that thing off. We've got a 180, which is obviously with the tech creatures, they can spawn, I think it's 12% higher 
than the standard max rate and this one's obviously spawned in at a 180 got a kibble tame on it so it's like 99.9% tame well, effectiveness so level 269 it tamed out at and uh, it's actually said do not um, level because I'm hoping to get another one and breed from them and if you level them you can't really keep an eye on their original stats so just to ensure that obviously no one else in the tribe or clan or group or whatever it is I don't know what it's referred to is it a tribe um yes tribe it's referred to as a tribe everyone just in case you was wondering in case anyone else in the tribe uh, wanted to sort of play around because otherwise uh if it's a breeding dino I tend to Yep, this one says, do not let Joy kill me. I have managed to get so many of Max creatures killed. I think in the first four days of playing, I got two RGs and three Pteranodons killed. And as soon as I came over to the Valguero map, I got killed by an invisible ice wheel. Burn. So, yeah, apparently that's the thing. That was fun. Yeah, so uh, this is the pace so far. And um, let me quickly show you... Oop up here i did actually start making progress on what is going to be our future kibble farm in order to be able to move all the dinos from the kibble farm over i've decided to go for a triangle shape considering that you've got the triangle foundations now in the xbox one slash windows 10 version and we're going for a triangle version and have platforms well sort of ramps going up on either side or well, each side not either because that would indicate two but on each side of the triangle so that way all the eggs drop down the middle you don't have to do so much running like running about to collect them all and hopefully this works out all right we've got a water source just over there i've blocked it all in with behemoth gates because there are so many bad things in the area that want to just murder your face whenever they can like the true dons alone they are non-stop spawning around here and i have no idea how to stop them we've got quite a few moss chops um, the bugs in this area are just ridiculous as well. They spawn everywhere. And I had no idea, but the Denonicus, I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not, are actually spawning up here directly above for some reason. And the closest nest to this location is around about 30 to a minute fly in that direction over there. And I really need to turn down my cane sound because, uh, there we go. In my ear, the flapping of the griffin is insanely loud. The ferrazinos as well, I've been having to kill tons of them because uh, I didn't realise that they can actually shred your armour while you're on your mount. So yeah, I've had to repair my armour quite a few times dealing with them guys, but we've got a nice little cave entrance here and I didn't show you the crystal ball on top of our base which is the main feature that i wanted this place for and that is there's actually fish that spawn in this water pool so we can actually go fishing and this is what i spend most of my time doing <laughs> yep um no matter where i go i tend to usually have a fishing rod on me or nearby just very similar to minecraft that if i'm waiting for something to happen like metal to smelt stuff to craft I usually end up just coming down here, doing a bit of fishing, hopefully get some blueprints. And uh, yeah, so that's our base so far. I'll give you periodically, periodically, or per is it periodically? I'll give you periodically, nope, that doesn't sound right. I'll give you regular updates, I'm just going to go with that. I'll give you regular updates on the progress of the base and the kibble farm. But that's enough talking in this area. I'm going to start making my way over to the aberration area, which is... I do believe right off the right hand side of the map over there and then we can go look for some shoulder buddies but I'm going to quickly make sure that I've got everything that needed for this little excursion so yeah catch you back in a sec all right then guys so we are over here at the entrance which is sort of a well pool now I had no idea this was the aberration entrance when I first came over here um me and Max oh, what am I getting back right no idea I think it might have been a compy. But yeah, uh, me and Matt came over here and I sort of dared him to jump in because we had no idea where it led. And he ended up jumping in, finding out it was the aberration area and then figured out that we can actually fly down here because you've got a little bit of an air gap and then you just fly down. Initially, I just flew straight down into the water. So we head on down here and then we went uh, the aberration area. Got a little bit of cave loading lag where it loads in the underworld and there we go
I think zoom in down. Yep, there we go. Awesome. All right then, guys. So a uh, lesson learned. Don't try to dive bomb on a griffin through the entrance of the aberration area because it will disconnect you from the server. You'll end up at the bottom with no griffin in sight. I'm assuming that I have obviously been kicked off the griffin halfway through loading into the area. He has landed somewhere up top. Um, yeah, at this view. And I can't actually see him anywhere. So we have now got a different plan in mind for our day's adventure. And that is trying to figure out if we're able to survive in the aberration area on foot. <laughs> Not how I was planning to take this adventure, but apparently the sort of world had different plans for me. Um, crap. Uh, and I can't see him anywhere, and I honestly have no idea if there's a way out of here on foot. So, let's uh, get some wood. We're gonna have to kill something, so we're gonna have to look for something small. So I want to set up a bed. Just in case I do die, so I've got a respawn point. But I'm fairly sure that the first thing I'm going to end up running into is probably going to be a Ravager. No, in my luck. But worst comes to worst, it just means I'll have to spawn back at base and sort of find my way back here on another flyer. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So I'm going to sort of venture a little bit on foot. And if I manage to find some sort of metal, I could probably build some grapple hooks in order to try to get back up. But yeah, I'm going to see how I get on. And if anything bad or catastrophically bad happens, I'm sure I'll bring you back. <laughs> Alright then, guys. So I had a work with the admin and he said that there is an entrance at 38.57 on the map. So that would be that direction oh my god it's so far 3857 it's miles over that way um so yeah i don't even know what sort of badness is going to be down here i made a bunch of the glow sticks because well we're in the aberration area we're stuck on foot so might as well i've also got the wingsuit so i may try to glide over to there the higher up bit but i don't think i'm actually going to make it that far so Let's just see. You know what? I could probably... No, I don't, I don't want to do that. That would be really cheaty. I could just upload my player onto the drop. Oh, and there we go. We didn't have enough speed. Come on. Come on. Oh, no, I'm never going to make that. Okay, I see what sort of badness we get stuck into down here. Come on, have a smithy or some grapples. One or the other. Great glow sticks and saddle. But I do hear a dodo. Where are you? I need to hide. There you are. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to be venturing on foot for as long as I can. Hello, crazy looking glow in the dark dodo. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can manage to build up a smithy, get situated and get some grapples in order to get the heck out of it. Yeah, catch you back in a bit. And, by the way, if you're wondering, when it's raining up top, you can refuel, refuel? Refill your canteen. But we've got a couple of raptors over here now, and looks like we're going to get into a fight. Where are you? Where'd you go? Do you reckon that this rock will give me high ground? Okay, so we've got two of the raptors here. They know where I am. Come on. I'm fairly sure they'll be able to nip me from this side, but not much we could do about that now. So we hop onto a mushroom tree. Get a height advantage on them. Ah, oh, come on. And the rain has stopped. But luckily we've got two canteens on us to cover us and I don't know if I'm hitting an invisible wall there or not. I've got a hit on him. Come on. Once we get rid of these two raptors I can then venture up there. 
Hopefully not run into any ravagers. Come on, what are you doing? I can hear something growling. We've got a spino over there. But it sounds like something's very close and growling. Come on. Will you get him a goddamn shot? Oh, really? You juking the arrows now? This one should only be one or two shots, there we go, that's one down. Where's your friend? Why is your friend not eating you? Have you got bugs? Oh, I think that was a headshot. There we go, that's number two down. I'm gonna leave the bugs eat him. Actually, before the bug completely eats him. Can I get some of the side? And killed a bug as well, apparently. Okay. Well, let's venture on. Um, I don't know if they have the poisonous mushrooms. Ah! Bugs. Come on. There we go. I don't know if they have the poisonous mushrooms in this or not. If I remember correctly. Oh, come on, really? Freaking bugs. Okay. Do they have the poisonous mushrooms in this or not? I don't see any with the red bottoms on, so I'm just hoping that they don't. Sure we'll find out. I put down a sleeping bag as well, just in case. What is that? There's, oh my god, I didn't even realise there was Dimetron. Well, not Dimetrodons, but the aberrant variations of them. Hmm, that's interesting. So... We're on the lookout for metal. I've tried hitting every single rock that was around that area. And you don't even get the little bits of metal that you would usually get. Which is a little bit unfortunate. So we are on the lookout for metal. Trying to avoid any major dangers. Oh, hello. Hey, I see a... I think he takes the brown ones or is it the blue ones? We'll try the blue ones. Exactly like that. Guess I'll tame this guy up. That's one thing. Oh, we've got a sheep over here as well. As long as nothing comes along and eats my face, uh, I'll bring you back once we've tamed this little guy up. And hopefully he can direct us to the way out. Yay! So, technically we have accomplished our mission for this episode. We've managed to get a shoulder buddy. And this one is going to be called Buddy. Because he's the bulb dog. So, let's do that, and, wait, come here buddy, there we go, and then we do a little bit of that, and can we light him up, oh, yep, there we go, nope, that's gobble gobble, there we go, light up, okay, you're going to be our friend, direct us to the way out, any other badness around here, let's see how long this guy lasts as well as me, because I really need to find some metal. If I don't, I am screwed. Um, which way? Okay. Need to try to keep to the high ground. Because down below is the riverbed. And the riverbed is full of all sorts of badness. Uh, there's Carcanos, Spinos, and Raptors, and... Yep, there's a Spino, there's a Spino. I vaguely remember dealing with this on the actual Aberration map. <laughs> oh, and uh, yep, I am actually pooping myself in-game, as well as in real life, because going down there does not look like fun at all. Um, I've still not been able to spot any metal, and this path here sort of ends... So I can attempt to fly over the Spino. Uh, how's my top holding out? Oh, going to be cutting it close. Um, can we make a lever or high top by any chance? Because the wings take the durability of the top, 
if we just wrap on a new top with our wings on, like so, and then that way we will have full durability, which is a little bit weird. You would have thought that you'd have to take off the wings and repair them, but um, well, here goes nothing, I guess. Yeah, yeah, there's a max level something, it's more than likely going to be the Spino now, my luck. But we've made it over, and there's metal. But I hear something. Is it just a Dimetrodon? Metal, metal, yes, metal! Give me that beautiful metal. Okay, we don't need that much, we just need enough. Um, Let's see what we can get on the go, shall we? We need a forge. So we need stone and fibre. And let me go and gather this. So let me see if I can't get a... Oh. Is that literally just the dimension I'm making all that noise? Oh no, we've got a baryonyx. Yeah. Hide. Okay, he's going in the other direction. I think we're safe. But there's a spino down there. Oh uh, no. Um, yeah. Let me see what I can gather. And uh, I'll see if I can get a forge up and running. Get this metal smelted. Hopefully be able to get some grapples. And get the hell out of here. Yeah, smithy on the go. Okay. Step one. Done. Um, step two is probably let's unlock the grapple. Where are you? Go to grapple. There we go. What do we need? A oh, cement in paste? Come on! <sighs> um. Have I got any carrotting or chitin or chitting? No, of course I haven't. Oh, man. As soon as you think you're making progress, it's just... Uh, what gives a uh, chitin around here? I know that there's sometimes the trilobites. I can't see any though. And I don't want to go down there looking. I know that the Karkonos, the big crab guys do, but other than that, I'm not too sure. Which means we may well be a little bit screwed. Oh my god. Okay, well, not too sure what I'm meant to do now, but you know what? We're getting some metal. <laughs> what do I need to repair my crossbow before it breaks? 14, we need a little bit more fibre, so we might as well get something out of this. And then I'll leave these things up here unlocked for any other people that may end up getting trapped down here. Hopefully they've got some in paste on them. Because I know that I haven't. Yes, that's that. Wait for a little bit more of this metal to smelt. Come on. How much metal is it to repair? Two more pieces. And then we venture on to... I honestly can't remember where he said. So, that's it. 3857. I am making my way over there bit by bit. Well, I've still got a long way to go on the longitude, but I think it's in that direction, so it looks like that's the way that we're going to be going. After we repair my crossbow. Is that everything? Uh, wood. And happy days. I'll take that, I'll take the hide. 
turn you off. Unlock and unlock. That way anyone else can use it. And we shall venture on. But first, I'm going to take a siesta. All right then, guys. So as soon as I stop recording, see the sort of recording time. Um, one is that we are long gone past the sort of cutoff point for today's episode, and two, I ended up getting attacked straight away as soon as I stopped recording by a Karknos, and I ended up having to paraglide back to sort of where I began, like just above me, or just above behind me, is where I sort of hopped down and I sort of floated down. Our Smithy's all the way down there on the right hand side. And then I'd get past a couple of Spinos and found my way up here. And yeah, so uh, not going too brilliantly. But unfortunately, that is all the time that we've got for today's episode. So yeah, unfortunately, we've not made it out. And we're going to have to carry on to see how I fare in next episode. So hope you've enjoyed today's one anyway. And uh, hopefully it goes slightly better. But technically... We have succeeded in our goal of getting a aberration shoulder buddy for today's episode. <laughs> I don't know how long he's going to last, but I really do hope he lasts for a while. Let's light it up. Yeah, so uh, hopefully you enjoyed today's one. Hopefully I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye.